Come on, everybody! You are on the channel for English for Biology majors, which is brought to you by Ciji University's Susan Ye. We hope after you learn this class, you will think biology is fun, and to read biology book is piece of cake. Let's go! Yay! Hello, everyone. In this part of lesson ten, we are still going to learn prefixes and suffixes related to tissue and organs. First, we need to review what we learned last time. For finger and the toe, we use two prefixes: digital, d i g i t o, and dactyl, d a c t y l o. For claw and the nail, we use halo, h e l o, and the onycho, o n y c h o. For limb, we use one prefix, mello, m e l o, and the one suffix, milia, m e l i a. For arm, we use brachial, b r a c h i o. For hand, we have three prefixes: chiro, c h e i r o, or chiro, c h i r o, and the man, m a n. And we also learn our thumb index: middle, ring, pinky, and palm, and back, and wrist. In the second part of Lesson ten. We will learn more about tissue and the organs. First, we will learn neck. When we want to talk about neck, we could use three prefixes: cervical, c e r v i c o, dero, d e r o, and the tracheal, p r a c h e l o. For cervical, our example is cervicalthenia. Cervicalthenia is a pain in the neck. When when my neck hurts, we can say I have cervicalthenia. And for dero, d e r o, our example is derodinamus. Derodinamus is also called diaphanous, meaning. A fetus with two heads, like in this picture, this cow has two necks. And why a diaphanous creature using this term, derodinamus? Dero means neck, but <clears throat> well, ah,、uh, didymus, d i d y m u s, is also from Greek, means double. Well, for any creature has two heads, they They are also have two necks, so I guess that's why a diaphanous creature is being called derodinamus. It's talking, um,、uh, it is referring that they also have two necks. And P R A C H E L O. Our example is tra tracheoplasty. Tracheoplasty is a surgery to. Suture the cervix around. Suture the cervix of our uterus early in pregnancy. It is often operated to、um, to prevent miscarriage, and it will remove toward the end of the pregnancy when the risk of miscarriage has passed. So for those ah、uh, pers for those women that ah、uh, has mul had multiple miscarriages before, the doctor may consider using tracheoplasty to save her baby. Let's review for neck. We have three prefixes: cervical, c e r v i c o. Dero, D E R O, and the tracheal, T R A C H E L O. For throat, 
we have one prefix pharyngo, p h a r y n g o. Our example is pharyngozerosis. What is a pharyngozerosis? X e r o means dry, and the, the suffix s i s or o s i s meaning process or condition. So. Well, I guess you probably realize now pharyngozerosis means dryness of the pharynx. Having a dry throat, then we need to drink water. When we talk about chest, we have two prefix, thoraco, T-H-O-R-A-C-O, and the steso, S-T-E-T-H-O. Our example for thoraco is thoracic cage. It is also called a rib cage. And steso, S-T-E-T-H-O, our example is stethoscope. Stethoscope is a medical instrument used for listening to sound produced with the, within the body. And it is often combined with a sphygmal manometer. Spignol, uh, manometer is used to measure blood pressure. The first stethoscope was invented by René Lennec in 1820. And actually, during that time, the reason why he invented a stethoscope is because he is too shy to put his ear on woman's chest especially for those women that uh, he wrote in his notes that uh, there's uh, this woman, she has, she is fat, so it's not easy to hear her heart. And he feel it is very inappropriate to do, to do so on a woman. So he uh, suddenly he realized that uh, one time somebody Tell him that if you roll a piece of paper into a small roll and put it on your ear, you can hear the sound more clearly. So he tried it and it worked. And that's how he invented the stethoscope. Let's review what we learned for chest. When we want to talk about chest, we could use two prefixes. Thoraco, T-H-O-R-A-C-O, and the steso, S-T-E-T-H-O. For breast, we have three prefixes. Mammo, M-A-M-M-O, and masto, M-A-S-T-O, and the mazo, M-A-Z-O. Our example for mammo is mammogram. Mammogram is an x-ray picture of the breast used to screen for breast cancer because there's a lot of soft tissue in our breast. So to take a mammogram, we need to press, uh, put our breast in this machine and then it will press really hard. It actually hurts a lot. Our example for M-A-S-T is mastitis. Mastitis, the suffix I-T-I-S means inflammation. So mastitis is inflammation of a breast. This is a picture of a breast. And mesopexy. Mesopexy, it is a near distinct term for surgical fixation of sagging breast. Uh, when your breast is uh, sagging, they use uh, mesopexy to lift it. It is also called mastopexy. Let's review what we learned for breast. There are three prefixes. Mammo, M-A-M-M-O, masto, M-A-S-T-O, and the mazo, M-A-Z-O. When we talk about teeth or nipple, we have two prefix. One is thelo, T-H-E-L-O. The other one is thelo, T-H-E-L-E. Our example for T-H-E-L-O is thelorhagia. Thelorhagia is bleeding from the nipple. 
that is called Cetoragia. And our example for T-H-E-L-E is Cetoplasty. Cetoplasty is a plastic operation on the nipple. Let's review what we just learned. For tit and nipple, we have two prefixes, T-H-E-L-O and T-H-E-L-E. -E. We have finished all the prefixes and suffixes in this part of lesson 10. Now let's review it again. For neck, we have cervical, C-E-R-V-I-C-O. Dero, D E R O, and the tracheal, T R A C H E L O. For throat, we use pharyngo, T H A R Y N G O. For chest, we have two prefixes, thoraco, T H O R A C O, and the steso, S T E T H O. For breast, there are three prefixes, mammal, M-A-M-M-O, masto, M-A-S-T-O, and mazo, M-A-Z-O. For teeth, nipple, we have two prefixes, T-H-E-L-O and T-H-E-L-E. Okay, we have finished the second part of lesson 10. Next time when we come back, we will finish lesson 10. And there are still more prefixes and suffixes for tissue and organ coming. See ya! English for Biology major is brought to you by TCU's English for Biology major course team. If you have any questions, don't forget to visit our FB fans page. The website is here and you can also scan the QR code to reach to our FB fans page. This course is sponsored by Centers for Faculty Development and Instructional Resources of TCU.